this episode of Ice Pilots NWT. At 150. I've never seen oil pressure that high. Oh. Pilots under pressure, and things are ready to blow. It's gonna blow up. Rookies under pressure. Two young pilots are tested on the DC-3. Cargo under pressure, and Janelle blows up. Minus 51 with a wind chill or something. Wow, beautiful this morning or what? It's a little crisp, eh? They call it First 40. A dreaded day for Buffalo Airways when the mercury in Yellowknife plummets to 40 below. Too cold for man or machine. Nothing likes to work in this cold. Machine, nothing. Despite the cold, Buffalo C-46 is needed for a mission up the Mackenzie Valley where it's slightly warmer. But if it gets any colder than minus 40, all flights are canceled. Buffalo has learned the hard way that below minus 40, things mechanical tend to fail. 33-year-old co-pilot Scott Blue grew up in the milder temperatures of downtown Toronto. This is his second frigid winter at Buffalo. Did he sit back there? At six foot seven, Scott is known as too tall because he's actually too tall to fit in some cockpits. Somebody said minus 43 a few minutes ago. But he's not flying today, just helping rookie ramp hands get the plane ready to face the extreme cold. Hooray! Nice. Oh, really? But today, the cold's not the only problem Buffalo faces. The first 40 below, Ian calls in sick, so you know what? Scotty's here, so too tall gets the nod on this one, so. Home, headset, airport. But Scott's not prepared to fly. I'm literally gonna run home, grab my headset, grab my bag, just right back. Get in the plane and go. While Scott races to get his gear for this flight, his roommate, 29-year-old C-46 Captain Devin Brooks, checks the weather forecast up the valley. Clear and cold. How's the weather looking? It's cold. It's 40 below at altitude. Oh, but it's 25 below in the well. For now, temperatures up the valley are still above yeah, the minus 40 no-fly threshold. 34. But they're dropping fast. Scott arrives home. Hello? Where his other roommate, Devin's girlfriend, Janelle Glenn, is studying. What's going on? Last minute change of plans. Cluster f Maybe the third time in my year and a half at Buffalo, I've had to run home. Grab my gear and go. Picked the wrong day to shave. Across town on the tarmac, Devon C-46 is stuffed to the ceiling with a full load of cargo for the valley run. Whoa, 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 whoa. Take it back. We're not going to have any room. We got 10 pallets to go in here. It's just a lot of physics. You can't fit it in. Devon came to Buffalo three years ago intent on flying the C-46. The heaters conked out on the flight yesterday. So mechanic Chuck Adams is coming along again today, just in case. Why well, I nearly froze to death. That's why I gotta go again today. The four remote communities on the Valley Run depend on Buffalo Air. If Buffalo can't fly, their supply line is cut off. The plane, the captain, and the mechanic are ready to go. But still no sign of a co-pilot. There's a good chance that close to finished loading. And then hopefully the heaters work today. <laughs> My toes are already numb. Scott arrives. They need to get going before the plane freezes up or the air temperature drops into the no-fly range. See ya. 
With temperatures still above minus 40 up the valley, this flight is good to go. At 5,000 feet, the temperature is right at the threshold of 40 below. Situation sucks. We shouldn't even be flying in this weather. No. The cockpit is freezing. Chuck tries to get a bit more out of the heater duct, but it barely makes a difference, and their breath is frosting the windshield. I guess we're going to have to kill somebody, make them stop breathing so we can land. <laughs> get all fucked up. Beautiful day. Then, if the cold wasn't enough... That's quite a bit of oil pressure. The f***er engine is, man. Climb it. The oil pressure on the right engine is alarmingly high. I've never seen oil pressure that high. Have you? No. Oh. Measured in pounds per square inch, oil pressure is a key indication that the oil is flowing properly and the engine is functioning correctly. Oil pressure for the C46 is normal at 80 psi. But every takeoff, it'll always go up to 100 sometimes in the extreme cold. But then after you go through your power settings, it'll slowly come back to 80 psi. If it cruises for 20 minutes, now it's at 150. The oil lines aren't made to withstand such stress. If they rupture, the engine, suddenly without oil, will seize up and stop. Usually, if it's 120 psi, you have a serious problem. We're going to have 160 PSI here in a minute or two. Yeah, kind of looking like that. Climb it. Do you think it's right? Well, I don't know. Well, tell me now, Chuck, before we get too far out of town, because I don't want to blow up. The oil pressure just kept climbing and climbing. Devin has to decide fast. Keep going or abort this flight and get on the ground. It's like it's slowly rising in pressure until it's going to pop. Oh, it could be numbered things. It's hard to say. Better air on the side of caution, in my opinion. I'm not playing with it. Oh, it's not all right. It's gonna blow up. Do a 180. Left turn, right turn. Whatever. There's only one thing to do. Devin turns around and heads back to Buffalo. Chuck knows more about those engines than myself and Scott put together. We made the decision to come home. But within minutes, the oil pressure changes again. Going down now. Oh, yay. You know, the plane's like, I'm going home now. I'm going to be good. Going down even more now. It was sort of playing with us. As soon as we did a U-turn and set course for Yellowknife, it started to go down. And it went down quite a bit. Ah, let's go. What? Go where? Valley. What the f do you want to do that for? Well, down now. Well, why the f is it doing that? I think it's all f up. Chuck knows every quirk of the C-46, but it's still a calculated risk. Okay. Okay. Well, we spun around again, and we're heading back towards Delaney. Back on course on the coldest day of the year, the C-46 crew pray they've made the right decision and that the oil pressure in the right engine will hold. Buffalo Airways wannabe pilots Andrew Vike and Graham Ferguson are exhausted from slogging it out on the ramp for nine months. It's, you're up here, you're isolated, so you're away from your family and stuff, and some people miss home. And It's like the military only. There's no schedule. You just never stop working. Fresh out of pilot school in British Columbia, the two rampies have worked their way up to flight attending on the daily passenger service. It's just one step from their dream, flying one of these vintage warbirds as a Buffalo co-pilot. Buffalo breeds the best pilots in the world. 
because we demand everything from them. Everything. When you're 25 years old, you don't get exhausted. I mean, there's, there's no such thing as, I mean, they're, they're fireproof and bulletproof and waterproof and non exhaustible. Oh, when it's 40 below outside and you got a 70 year old airplane you got ready, this is tough stuff. And it weeds out 99.9% .9 of everybody. In the last six months, three rampies were weeded out. Mild mannered Wilf Dar left for another airline. Just another day, yeah, more or less. Quebecer Audrey Marchand went home. <sighs> and outspoken Jeremy Dow was laid off. I uh, love my job, I love my job. Just gotta focus on flying, get Joe happy. With those three gone, Andrew and Graham are the most senior rampies at Buffalo. It's the, this Buffalo you grind it out. Okay, let's go find Andrew. Tell him good news. But today, they're about to catch their big break. The rumor that I've heard is that Joe wants both Graham and I checked out. After tons of hard work, their chance has come. So I know you and uh, Graham have been working really hard, and this is a time where it pays out, right? So basically means me and Graham are getting checked out. Yeah, basically. Awesome. Getting checked out means moving up from flight attendant to co-pilot, the holy grail after months of endless grunt work. I was talking to Mikey. The uh, good news is that I'm getting checked out. The bad news is you're getting laid off. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> pretty sure I'll be getting checked out pretty quick, so that's like really, really good news. These flight school graduates are licensed to fly small single engine aircraft, but Andrew and Graham face a steep learning curve with the much larger twin engine DC-3. It's probably 10 times bigger than anything we've flown before. It's all based on pilotability, and uh, Joe is going to want us to be perfect off the bat. In the C-46, pilots Devin Brooks and Scott Blue and mechanic Chuck Adams are heading north to deliver food and mail to communities up the Mackenzie Valley. Oh, God, climb again. And there's trouble again with the oil pressure. Just after takeoff, it had spiked to almost twice its normal level. Oil lines can explode under pressure this high, destroying the entire engine. There was no change in anything else but the oil pressure. The outside air temperature was consistent. Now the oil pressure is back up even higher. How many PSI does it take to blow those? Well, I've seen them up around 164. In a piston engine, oil pressure is your main gauge. It fluctuates, makes you nervous. Closing in on 180 pounds per square inch, it's more than twice the 80 PSI it should be. We have six hours of steady flying to go, and we didn't know if it would hold. I think we got an old crew of our phone. Can you fix it? Well, would you like me to crawl outside there right now, a little bit, or jump in front of that old cooler? And in the sparsely populated north, there are few airstrips en route if they need to make an emergency landing. We have to hire some trips so far. I know. It's getting higher and it's going to f up here. So she's close to blowing up, probably. Yeah. It's good to have Chuck there because he has so much expertise. But the ultimate decision rests with the captain. Tail knife company is AVO. AVO. Hey, Roxy, we're on our way home. You can let everybody know we'll be down in 25 minutes. Now Devin is faced with another crucial decision. We're going home, but I'm wondering whether to shut the thing down before it does blow. If you shut it down, though, at those temperatures, it freezes up very, very quickly with the airflow over the engine, so you have no chance of restarting it or anything like that. It's a tough call. The C-46 could limp home on one engine, but Devin decides to keep it running. Those lines are probably holding on by a thread. It was getting, you know, prohibitively bad. I don't think the gauge reads after 200. I mean, 10 more PSI, and we weren't even be able to know how high it was, just 200 or plus. Buffalo 311 C46, Yellowknife in 13 minutes. Minutes later, they begin their approach into Yellowknife. The right engine oil pressure remains extraordinarily high. 311 tower, wind is 330 on 5, clear to land on runway 33. Clear to land on 33. Then, the minus 40 curse hits the landing gear. Clear down. Check, here she comes. 
the right side wheel comes down. Right work. But the left one doesn't descend. That happened yesterday? No. Oh. With the runway in sight, Devin keeps his cool and retracts the landing gear. Here, coming up. And tries again. There it goes. Got three green. This time, both sides of the landing gear come down. Without a second to spare. First day at 40 below, so everything's kind of, uh, uh, it's always the worst day. Soon enough, the oil pressure mystery is solved. The cause of the problem is no surprise. Cold? Yeah, it's cold. Okay. Too cold. Gelled cooler? Gelled cooler. When the hot oil from the engine reached the frozen cooler valves, it gelled and clogged the cooler, becoming thick and slow as molasses, and pushing the oil pressure to the breaking point. He doesn't like me. Scott's taking the plane's crankiness personally. I think I dated her sister or something. I don't know what it is. She's mad at me for something. Just seemed to have a bad uh, run of luck with her. But we made the right call. We brought her back home. Everybody's safe. But there's still a problem. The communities on the Valley Run will not get their food shipment today. If it wasn't minus 40, it wouldn't be a big deal. But uh, we're trying to get it all done before it drops another five degrees. That could ground the run indefinitely, which would cut off the supply line to the Valley communities. For now, this C-46 is out of service. To get the food and mail delivered, Buffalo mechanics must race to have the other C-46 ready to fly by morning. Another early winter morning in Yellowknife. Not quite as cold as it was yesterday. Scott and Devin aren't flying today. Morning suck, man. I wish I was still asleep. But their roommate, Devin's girlfriend, Janelle Glenn, is returning to fill in at Buffalo for the first time in months. You know, I love Buffalo and whatever, but it's not a lifetime job. I found my toque. <laughs> Last fall, 22-year-old Janelle left her job in Buffalo's cargo terminal to go back to school. Hamlet, horses of the night, streetcar named Desire. The high school equivalency exams that could be her ticket to higher education are just days away. She can handle it. She's just a little grumpy in the morning. It's like we all are, not too much sleep. You know, when you work from 5.30 to 5.30 and you go to school from 7 till 10, that's not a schedule I can handle. Thus, conscious does make cowards of us all. OK. I don't like Shakespeare. I like Newton. Numbers. Shakespeare, as far as I'm concerned, I wish he never wrote a book. <laughs> what? I love Shakespeare. Devin hates him. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take up arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. A sea of troubles is just what Janelle doesn't need right now. You're good. I will. It was in pieces just yesterday undergoing maintenance, but now the backup C-46 cargo plane emerges from the hangar ready to fly. Buffalo mechanics raced against the clock and one. Now, the food and mail cargo from the first C-46 that had engine trouble yesterday will be loaded onto this plane. And if all goes well, it will reach the anxious residents of the Mackenzie Valley before the day's over. Across the road, Janelle's first morning back in cargo is off to a bumpy start. I've got shit I've got to do. This is crunch time for me in school, so what the f do you expect me to do? She's covering for cargo manager Kelly Jurasevich, who's away. Okay. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow then. And now her co workers have left her in the lurch. Paul Candace called in sick. Jack didn't show up till just a little while ago, and then he decided that he was just going to leave. So that means I have to stay when I've got schoolwork and shit I got to do. I mean, I think it's important because, you know, people won't get to eat if you don't, you know, ship their produce and whatever. Like, it's important, but. Some other people 
tend to say, you know, whatever, it's just another paycheck or it's just another J-O-B. And for Janelle, this J-O-B is beginning to feel like a T-R-A-P. I don't want to live my whole life and work at f***ing Buffalo. That's why I'm going to school. I've done this a couple times for Kelly. You know, when she leaves, I come in and, you know, help out. But when the cat's away, the mice will play, man. With no choice, Janelle braves the cold to help the crew load the C-46. I wish I could just go home and study, but that's not gonna happen today. It sucks. Have a good day, you guys. The day is still young, and Janelle will use every available minute to cram. Lately, I haven't been able to study for anything because I've been working here. <laughs> Hopefully, the people that didn't show up today will show up on Wednesday. And I've told them, if you don't show up, then that means I have to stay here, and that means that, you know, I won't be able to do the things that I need to do. I'll be right there. There's the license uh, and my passport, and there's a TDG certificate in there in the back somewhere. Rampy's Graham and Andrew have an exam coming up, yeah, too, an in-flight checkout yeah. test. They've lassoed freshly minted Captain Gord Cooling to help them fly the sim. Props, full fine. A PC-based flight simulator. In the heyday of the DC-3, military pilots trained on simulators like this Link Trainer. Patented in 1931, it mimicked the pitch, roll, dive, and climb of the DC-3 without actually leaving the ground. Times have changed. Gear up. Takeoff was brutal. With software and a few off-the-shelf peripherals, this ordinary computer becomes a virtual DC-3, complete with simulated wind conditions and the actual coordinates of the Hay River and Yellowknife runways. Okay, you have a hydraulic failure. A hydraulic failure. Graham and Andrew will have to face a gauntlet of high-pressure drills and worst-case scenarios in their checkout rides. Minimum snow contact. Minimum snow contact. You don't say that. Overshoot, max power. Overshoot, all I want you to say. max power, that's it. Yeah, that's all I want to say. They need to sharpen their skills quickly. Their future at Buffalo depends on it. Soon, they'll trade this for this. Flying the real thing. All nine tons of it. A new day. Yeah, left ground, uh, Buffalo 406, DC-3, just southbound to a river. As the sun rises, Andrew Vike clutches the yoke of a DC-3 as it takes off for Hay River. That's awesome. Okay. Once again, Gord Cooling is the mentor. Andrew is training for the big day when he flies his checkout ride. Best part of working at Buffalo, I definitely like the long 14-hour shifts. Uh, busting my ass. Oh, the best part is this, flying. This is what we work for. This is all I want to do, all day, every day. Andrew's checkout could come at any time. To get him ready, Gord puts him through his paces. 180 degrees and 30 degrees prior to roll-up. Good, so turn to left. And uh, it's all clear left. And turn. Andrew has had almost no time on the DC-3. With his limited experience, this is like going from driving a compact car to a big bus. Bigger, heavier more powerful. Fly the three, and you can just about fly anything. And it feels that way, too. It's one of the best feelings you can have when you're uh, flying just above the clouds there on an early morning, and you got the sunrise shooting over at you. The three, it flies so smoothly and so nice. It's like a sense of freedom that nothing else really provides you there. It's pretty awesome. For landing one three. Cruising is one thing, landing a DC-3 is another. A pilot suddenly has several things to handle at once. Airspeed, descent rate, flap and power settings, controlling pitch, and yaw. Yeah, they're all plates, Roger. Let me just pursue visual now. Yeah. 
how Andrew does here can make or break his future at Buffalo. Flop three. Flop three, sir. Check your airspeed. Roger. Cross full. There's full flop. And that nose down. Yeah, just make sure your heels on the floor, you don't touch the brakes. Yep. Yeah. And third tech feet down. Yeah, that's good, man. Right on. Thanks a lot, Courtney. Yeah. For Andrew, yeah. it's one more logged hour and one step closer to his goal. But until he takes and passes the big test, the dream remains exactly that. Way too early in the morning for me right now. Janelle's been burning the candle at both ends. I was at school till 10 after 10. Came home and and then went to bed. But after months of studying for her high school equivalency exams, the tests are just 24 hours away. For this exam, I gotta focus on myself and studying, not in Buffalo. But for at least some of the day, she'll be running the show in cargo. I'm only going to go in for a couple hours today. If we had employees that showed up every day, it wouldn't be too bad. Morning. So far, so good. No one is called in sick. Put it on this with a private on this one. This is pretty small. We're going to need to wrap this one. Oh, you son of a bitch. I hate this shit sometimes. But with a shortage of rest and only one day left till exams, Janelle's stress level is mounting. I just thought, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, you know? But Janelle's made a commitment to Buffalo, and she thinks she can manage it all. But Janelle speaking. When I come back here, it's like I have to work hard here, too, and hard there. I don't like failure, so I have to continue. Today, Captain A.J. DeCoste is at the helm of the C-46 going up the valley. All is going well, until... It's a 250-pound pallet of chips, which is about three and a half, four feet high. They had about 200 or 300 pounds of pop on top of it. I explained it to her, we got to put the pop on the bottom, or it's going to fall off and get damaged. Him what happened? Like, you know, what's the matter? And he lost it. Why are you blah, blah, blah? By the end of it, I ended up getting upset and I raised my voice at her, which I regret. But once you say something, you can't take it back. It's done. If I had known I was going to escalate into something like that, I, I just would have done it myself and been over with. Uh, I feel bad about it, for sure. Well, I need to get out of here. <laughs> While the valley run is under control, Janelle is not. Though Graham and Andrew are licensed to fly small single-engine aircraft, they need a checkout in-flight test to fly Buffalo's big DC-3s. Up to now, they've only flown training runs. If they check out, they can co-pilot on regular runs with passengers and freight. It's uh, what you come up here for. But you spend years saving money to do all the training, and then another year or so on the ramp here, working like a... Everything's good to go. Today, Graham could become Buffalo's newest DC-3 co-pilot. But first, he has to pass the checkout. And that's far from guaranteed. You know, it's, it's a little nerve-wracking. It's like, you know, you're kind of your first checkout, it's a big deal. Like, you just don't want to screw it up. How's it going? Graham has just learned who will fly in the captain's seat on the checkout ride. Chief pilot and Buffalo legend, Arnie Schrader. You haven't flown with Arnie. No, I don't think I've ever flown with Arnie. And behind him, Captain Justin Simley will be the flight examiner, watching and evaluating. Good. Before they board the DC-3, Graham has to answer a battery of questions. Arnie and Justin drill him on the plane's standard operating procedures. V and O on the DC-3. 
PO is 159. Hey, flap extend speed for a quarter. 115 SOPs. Uh, landing gear extend speed. 138. Good. Graham's off to a good start. Right on. But now, he's hit with a blitz of tough questions about what to do in an emergency. Okay, let's do uh, engine fire. Uh, engine uh, shutdown drill. Uh, our engine fire drill. What is the engine fire drill? Uh, the pressure is on. Pretty much did everything I could to, to make myself most uh, mentally prepared for it. <laughs> you really just work pretty much until you're exhausted and uh, the day's over. And you go home, you get some food in you, and you hit up those books. Prop throttle mixture, better. up and away from the problem. Up and away from the problem at 95 knots. Graham makes it through the oral exam, but the toughest part is yet to come, the flight test. Yeah, it's a two crew ride. So if you fail, that's it, I fail. Yeah, <laughs> Arnie's been flying for, for 50 years, and if you fail, that's it, I'm <laughs> He's done. He has to retire. Yeah, no pressure. So it's a eh? lot of pressure on him. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Let's get out of here. They may be joking, but the pressure is real. Yeah, there's a lot on mine right now, that's for sure. Oh, engine failure. If Graham fails in the air, he may not get another chance. Moment, buddy. I hope so. Andrew watches Graham get set for his test ride. He knows he's next. Because Graham had the hours, he ended up getting checked out first, and he's like, as long as Andrew gets checked out right after me. The next 60 minutes will decide Graham's future at Buffalo. Tailwheel? Coming off a small single engine plane with limited experience, getting in a big tailwheel radial engine airplane is it's very, very different. And it's not an easy thing to do. And not everybody can do it. After nine months of paying his dues on the ramp, Graham Ferguson is about to get his shot at becoming a Buffalo DC-3 co-pilot. You know what it's for? Uh, that's for um, when uh, there's, you're on the ground and there's no pressure in the system. Mate. You can open it up and just, just say it's for mate. For, for, for mate. For mate. <laughs> Throughout the flight, Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader can assist Graham as right. needed. You have control. I have control. But Captain Justin Simley, the flight examiner, will be evaluating every move the rookie makes. You know, a big airplane compared to a small airplane, that carries a lot more momentum. You have to fly it a little differently. There's quite a few things. Just keep it straight. A little bit of back pressure is late or to the right. You're better. Justin will tell Graham immediately after the flight if he's passed or failed. You got the chief pilot sitting next to you. That was the first time I ever flew with Arnie. So uh, that was pretty cool. That guy, he's got so much experience. You can just tell just by sitting next to him. Like, it's crazy. Graham's biggest challenge, controlling his nerves. Just relax a little bit. Look at your instruments, scan them. It was probably more obvious that I was nervous than I, I would have liked. I, I think I had a pretty good death grip on the controls. Rolled out. Rolling out. Yeah, that's the idea. Like, this is the whole point of me being up north, and uh, you're finally there, and you got that running through your mind, and you're trying to keep it out of there. Just, no, no, just fly the plane, just fly the plane, just fly the plane. But flying the plane is only the beginning. The checkout ride is designed to test the pilot's ability to react appropriately in the most stressful situations. So, uh, engine uh, shutdown checklist. Engine number two is failing and has to be shut down. Luckily, it's only a drill. Security, I'm going to shut it off. But... All right. Justin keeps score while Arnie flings challenging situations at Graham. Give me your descent checks because you're coming up on that uh, 25. Clearance is safe, right? Uh, clearance not required. We're in the FR. And uh, safe, hey, we're going down to uh, 800. They approach Hay River. Graham prepares for a landing he's never attempted before. Never this flap, so we got the gear down. He won't be allowed to use the wing flaps to control his descent. 
Every pilot has to know how to do this in case the flaps fail. Watch your altitude. You're a little bit tight. The wing on the DC-3 is so huge, uh, it doesn't really want to stop flying. Graham has to slow down the plane earlier than usual and approach on a more shallow angle with nose up. Keep pushing that rudder, Graham. Keep it straight with your feet. Not on the brake, so good. Now always have that stick ahead a little bit once you touch down. All right. Perfect. The test is over. That's all right, you know. And Graham doesn't have to wait long to find out if he's made the cut. Well, you're a DC-3 pilot now. Thank Congratulations. You. Now get up there and put that tent on. <laughs> yeah. We spend, like, so much time trying to get to this point when it's finally here. Like, I can't even describe the feeling I have right now. I'm so happy. You know, he's got 250 hours, and he's new to the airplane, so... Uh, when you consider those factors, I think he did a hell of a good job. Now, Graham can co-pilot on DC-3 passenger flights with the boss, Buffalo Joe McBrien, in the seat beside him. Well, I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> Feels pretty good. Be crying tears of joy if my eyeballs weren't frozen. For Janelle, the big day has arrived. She's heading to her final exam. It is exciting in a sense to get it over with. Like, you know, I mean, I've worked hard to this point. Janelle's focus is on the task at hand. She's put yesterday's meltdown behind her. Three hours later, Janelle's exam is over. So it went really good, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get my marks back and Like, I feel like the door is open. Now I just have to figure out, you know, which, which way I want to go. But there's always something to ruin the moment. I got a ticket! <laughs> Shit! Loading zone, no permit. 40 bucks? Did I get a dozen mixed donuts? AJ DeCoast has not put yesterday's events behind him. Not yet. Didn't feel right about it all day yesterday or last night. She's here yet, eh? AJ sets up his peace offering as Janelle returns. Yeah. Hey, have a coffee and a donut there, will you? Um... Janelle doesn't make it easy for AJ. Hey, how are you feeling, dude? I'm good. Yeah. I think I did well, yeah, I think I... Good afternoon, Buffalo. Then, he manages to get her attention. Hey, look, sorry about yelling at you yesterday. Uh, I hope we can still be friends. All yeah, right. it's, you know, I mean, I just... I was just kind of shocked, is all. It was a very nice gesture that he, you know, recognized the, the uh, altercation, and uh, it was nice of him, definitely, to approach me. I think that was a, that was a big thing to do. Back as friends again, forgave each other. It's another good day. The time has arrived. With his buddy, Graham Ferguson, already checked out, the pressure's on 24-year-old Andrew Fike to join the ranks of qualified Buffalo Airways DC-3 co-pilots, or be left behind on the ramp. I have the logbook signed off, that'll be Justin is captain and flight examiner. Andrew has aced the oral part of the exam. Now, it's time to fly. Tower Buffalo, Trigger 1, with you on top. Trigger 1, Tower, line up runway 27 for now, number one to go. Wits on the right, right. Down the center line, 30 is number two to go. Are you ready, young man? I think so. Are you ready, Andrew? I hope so. It's the moment of truth for rookie pilot Andrew Fike. His checkout flight to become a co-pilot on the 75-year-old DC-3. Uh, you gotta know where those are in the dark, right? I don't know. Okay, so. Justin Simley is captain and flight examiner. A sudden opening in his schedule has them flying at night. 
This will put all of Andrew's training on the sim to the test. It's all about the instruments. Rotate. Rotate. Pull back on the stick. Pull back on the stick. On the brake, you're up. See, you're going to let it down. Keep it up. Pull back on the stick. Okay, you're up. My mind is all over the place, man. I just relax, okay? You gotta keep on your altitude. It's really black out there, all instruments, okay? You have to be able to do a hold. You have to do a number of different approaches. You do a number of emergency procedures and overshoots. Okay, my man, you ready? Roger. Okay, steep turn to the right. We do steep turns where you put the aircraft into a 45 degree bank. When executing a steep turn, the pilot must maintain airspeed and altitude. Altitude is ascending, pull back, pull back. But gravity has different ideas. You can't go above 100 feet or below 100 feet if you're doing your steep turn. You need to be uh, extremely accurate, precise on every maneuver that they ask you to do. Because as soon as you go above those limits, it's considered a failure and you've basically lost your chance at getting checked out in the aircraft. And try to hold your altitude as you roll around, okay? Yeah. Andrew stays within the limits and pulls off the steep turn. That's looking real nice, Andrew. Okay, 100 goal field in sight. We're landing, okay? Roger, landing. Lights are on, you clear to land. Roger. Okay, bring her down now. Okay. Keep it straight with your feet now. Okay, now we'll start bringing it into that level of attitude. 75, and there. In it. Now. He learns his fate within moments of touching down. Once we finally got down there, Justin's like, all right, good job, yeah, you passed. I was so tired at the time because we had such a, an incredible workload that it didn't hit me for about a week or so when finally I'm like, oh, wow, I'm checked out on an airplane right on. <laughs> With both Andrew and Graham officially checked out, Buffalo has gained two DC-3 co-pilots, and both of them are here to stay. All right, thanks. Thank you. That was fun. They're intelligent. They've got the desire and the will to learn, and, uh, and they want to be here. Now there's no way in hell I'm leaving. Like uh, I get to fly, a fl get to fly a plane. It's gonna have to be something that physically pushes me to the ground. That's gonna make me leave. Like something like falling off the 46, or making me break my leg, or something like that. So you have to kill me to get me to quit. I'm grabbing fuel. On the next episode of Ice Pilots NWT. Look at the whitest legs in Venezuela. Mikey scours the planet to track down a long lost water bomber. Yeah. I'll do what I can do. Kelly's health takes a turn for the worse. Might as well smoke. There you go. And a four legged passenger dumps a souvenir in flight. Dog just shit everywhere.